Hello everyone and welcome. In this video, I am going to prove the theorem if a sequence SN is convergent, then every subsequence of that sequence will converge to the same limit. I will prove that theorem. But actually our main goal here is to prove the Bolsan or Weierstrass theorem, which I will do in the next video. But for that we will lay out our groundwork in this video. All right, since we are talking about subsequences, let me introduce or let me explain what a subsequence is. Now, let's have a main sequence as a sub n where n goes from 1 to infinity. Okay, that's the main sequence. Now, how can you create a subsequence? What you can do is you can use the same terms, some terms in the main sequence okay and then create a subsequence out of it just like taking a subset but you only but you have to take you only have to take terms from the main sequence okay you cannot take terms from some other sequence or outside all of the terms in the subsequence has to come from the main sequence but one more important thing is that all terms in the subsequence should maintain the order that that had in the main sequence what do i mean let's do an example and it will totally make sense let's take an example sequence one one half one third one fourth one fifth one sixth so and so on and one over n and so and so on. that's the main sequence okay now if you want to create a subsequence out of it sure you can take um, the terms that you like i'm going to take one over two then i'm going to take one over fifth one over eight so and so on here I created a subsequence. Now all what I have used is the terms in the main sequence. That's good. And the second thing is this maintains the order, the pattern, right? The pattern means 1 over 8 came after 1 over 5 and 1 over 5 came after 1 over 2. So it totally maintain, maintains the order that had in the main sequence, okay? So this is an example of a subsequence. Now let me show you a counter example. Now an example, a non-valid subsequence will be something like this. One fourth, one half, one fifth, and uh, one eighth, and uh, one third. Now this is not a subsequence because one half in this subsequence comes after one fourth, which is not the case in the main sequence. In the main sequence, one half came before one fourth. So this new sequence does not maintain the pattern that contained in the main sequence, okay? Because for that reason, this new sequence is not a subsequence. So that order, maintaining order story is super important, okay? All right, now that's what a subsequence is. Now, um, this maintaining order story creates an interesting a relationship between the indexing of the main sequence and the subsequence. Now, this is very uh, foundational for the theorem that we are going to prove. Okay. All right. So let's denote our main sequence in this um, array. Okay. And let's create a subsequence and let's denote the indexing of subsequence by K and indexing of main sequence by N. Okay. All right. Let's create a subsequence. Now I choose my S sub 3 to be my first term of the sequence a subsequence and a sub phi to be the second term of my subsequence okay and a sub n and this will be kth term of my subsequence okay all right notice a relationship now the indexing of the first term of the subsequence is same as the indexing of the third term of the main sequence look at this if you look at the indexings, if you compare the indexings, okay, indexing of the subsequence is smaller than the indexing of the relevant or corresponding indexing of main sequence. Do you see that? Now, this happens because we are maintaining the order, okay? Since we are maintaining the order, the indexing of the subsequence, corresponding indexing, will be smaller than the indexing of the main sequence. Now, this is super important, okay? I can say it, uh, I can explain that sentence in this expression, okay? So, for all k, 
greater than no equal to 1 so that means for all indexing of the subsequence okay there exist a indexing um, let's see n strictly greater than k such that oops I'm running out of space such that a sub k is equal to s sub n what is the meaning of this statement well this means for each uh, term in the subsequence there's going to be an equivalent term in the main sequence but the indexing of that subsequence is smaller than or the indexing of the uh, indexing of the main sequence is larger than the indexing of the corresponding subsequence so i i wrote that in a mathematical expression so that's what i did all right okay so with that in mind let's go ahead and prove this theorem okay so the proof all right so we want to prove that if a sequence s in convergence then every subsequence of that convergence sequence converges to the same limit all right so for a fact we know that we are working with a convergent sequence our main sequence is convergent so let's use the definition of a convergent sequence all right so let's say the limit of the main sequence to be l then for every epsilon so for every so for any epsilon greater than zero there exist there exist a position uppercase in such that such that for all in greater than that uppercase position in implies or holds the bound s sub n minus l is less than epsilon this is from the definition okay all right now let's try to understand this pictorically because pictures always help with this definition okay so let's say we have a sequence like this now it looks like it's a decrease in sequence but it doesn't need to be a decrease in sequence so what it is saying is that we have this position uppercase n there exists this pos position uppercase n such that for all the terms in this sequence that comes after this uppercase nth position which in this region holds this inequality that's the meaning all right now this is for the main sequence let's create a subsequence okay so let's draw our subsequence just like this okay all right now we can write our statement like this so for any now notice this for any epsilon greater than zero there exist there exist uppercase in such that such that for all k greater than this uppercase nth position we want to know whether it holds this inequality okay now carefully look at this now k means the terms of or the indexing of the subsequence so we are talking about the terms in this subsequence in the same region that comes after this uppercase nth position right so term of the sequence lives in this region now previously we learned that for any k okay for any k value we know that a sub k the terms term of the sequ subsequence a the kth term of the subsequence a will be equal to a term in the main sequence nth term of the main sequence and now remember okay this indexing of the subsequence is actually smaller than the indexing of the main sequence okay so the terms of the main sequence corresponding to the subsequence in this region will be also in the same region that's what i'm trying to say both k and n are on the same region and comes after uppercase n so actually we can say for all okay so for all k greater than no equal to little n strictly greater than n okay all right what's going to happen is we already know that the the distance between the terms of the main sequence and the limit is less than epsilon now remember again remember every for all for all terms in the subsequence in this region there will be a corresponding similar term in the main sequence in the same region so this s sub n will be same as a sub k there will be a, a k and a n okay it works both ways which is the distance between the limit is less than epsilon okay all right so because of that this is the end of the proof 
right because of that this subsequence is also convergent to the same limit okay it's basically s sub n you can replace it by a sub k because s sub n is equal to a sub k and both of these things are in the same region that means which they comes after this uppercase nth position that's the idea okay this happens for every k every term of the subsequence comes after uppercase nth position so that's the proof it is kind of little bit weird and it's kind of obvious too okay so it's between those two all right so try to try to understand this all the the fundamental trick in this proof is to understand the relationship of the indexing okay and the definition of a subsequence because you are maintaining the order the pattern okay there's a special relationship between the indexing of the subsequence and the main sequence so the subsequence is convergent to the limit l okay and also the the main sequence is convergent to the limit l and that means the subsequence will also be converged just to the same limit as the main sequence which is l okay so hopefully i hope that i have explained the proof clearly okay or at least i tried right and um, in the next video, we can prove Bolzano Weierstrass theorem. That's the big theorem. That's what we are trying to accomplish. Okay. All right. Then I'll catch you in the next video. Thank you very much.